hello welcome back to my channel that is not how i start my videos <laughs> what the hell hi i'm liv and welcome back to my channel <laughs> that's much better i have recently decided since i bought loads of books which there will be a book haul coming out very soon don't you worry i would do a reading until i find a five star read <laughs> I love these types of videos because they literally can last up to like they can last anywhere from like three minutes to 20 like they honestly you've no idea how long they're gonna last so I'm really excited to do this video but I have recently bought a book cart and I filled it up so if you'd like a video on that I will do one of like setting my book cart and give you a tour of it all I'm kind of hiding it for now because I kind of do want to do a video on that I'm curious to see when I last had a five star read I feel like it's been a while. Quite a while ago. Oh my god, I've not had a five star in ages. The last five star read I had was just for the summer. When did I read that? Just for the summer. January, February, March, April, May. It was May. I read that in May. That was my last five star read. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I need to I need a five star read, mate. <laughs> okay, I've got a few in mind. So I want to read things that I think are going to be five star reads, but I also want to read things that I'm just really excited to read because those those can be your hidden gems that you think are going to be a good rating but not a five star. You read them and you're like, oh my god, that was a five star. So I've got a few. I've got The Last Housemaid by Ashley Winstead. So she wrote In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. And this book's meant to be like a cult book. And I'm, in, I'm excited about that. It's a thriller. I'm very tempted with that. I'm also tempted with Travis by Mia Sheridan, which is the next book in the Archer's Voice series. It's, I don't know if it's becoming a series or not, but I know it's the next one after that. I've also got If We Were, Vi if we Were Villains, which is like a dark academia book. This bookshelf has just got all my books that I've never read. It's just like a TBR cart. So it's just really easy to look at all the books. It's so like exciting to look at this little tbr car i'm just such a nerd for books <laughs> it's travis it's a really small book to be honest do you remember who travis was in the last book this is 310 pages really short i'm gonna do this one first i think get me into the swing of reading it might be a five star we'll never know because i think i'm pretty sure archer's voice was a five star so it could be but this book is about our main character travis and if you remember who travis hale was he was the brother of archer in the first book and he was not a nice guy he tried to do things to get to get archer in trouble and when he found out the truth about everything he was in the epilogue he was so apologetic and trying to get back on good terms with archer which was really good to see so this book, it says that Travis's, Travis Hale's past is riddled with regrets, but his future looks limitless. He's a police chief in idyllic Pelion, Maine. Women are regularly fallen at his feet and his family has mostly forgiven his mistakes. The new guy in town crosses him, things start to look shaky, especially when he meets the stranger's smooth make, smoothie making, bird seed eating, sister. Haven Tory's life fell apart, burned to the ground. At the time, it seemed like a solid idea to jump in her car. Her brother, a most willing co-pilot. Oh, this one's fake dating. So she's ran away to get away from her home. We don't know why yet. We'll find out in the book. And she wants to get the attention of Pelion's most eligible bachelor, Gage Buchanan, before she goes. Travis and her form an unlikely friendship. And it seems simple. She'll help him make her brother sweat a little. And he'll help her win over Gage. But then she starts to see the man beneath the brooding. And Travis starts to see the woman behind the mess. So it's like they both want to be with each other because they like start to see the real them under everything they're hiding. But then at the same time, like she doesn't want to get stuck in this new town. And he doesn't want to be second best because she wants somebody else um it just looks interesting i will give it a go probably use my tabs for the first time i bought some book tabs and it's blue so i'm gonna use like a blue book tab i think i'm gonna have set up and i'm gonna read a bit and see what i feel oh my god the dedication in this book <sighs> it's about archer <sighs> emotional already i was so emotional reading archer's voice like i did a video on it and i was an absolute wreck <laughs> I am 
exactly 101 pages into this book. It is so good. I don't know what I expected, but I'm really enjoying this book. So right now we've got our main character. I've been tabbing, by the way, it's my first ever time tabbing a book. I'm actually having so much fun. So we've got our main two characters. We've got Haven and Travis. And we've had like all the explanation to why Travis is trying to get revenge on Haven's brother. And I'm really liking this book. I really like it. I think it's it's really well written so far. We've had Archer pop up, which, oh my God, I was so happy about. And Brie and the children. And this one's set like eight years in the future. So... We've had a lot of time to had a lot of time for Travis to have made up everything he did in the first book, which I appreciate because when I did pick up this book for the first time and I got it, I did think, how can I forgive Travis for what he did to Archer? Like, how can I forgive that? And it's been eight years now, and he has made up a lot. Like, there's still tension between Archer and Travis, but he has made it up as best he's can right now. I think that Haven is definitely a wildcracker. Um, firecracker firecracker <laughs> she's a firecracker and i honestly half the time i'm like what the hell is she on about because she's honestly a bomb pot like she goes on about those random things she's obsessed with plants and she always talks to plants and things and she's very much in her own world like she's in her own lane she doesn't care who follows tropes right now are that she likes somebody and he travis is trying to help her get him but at the same time he has fallen for her so it's guy falls first um there's a spark between them anyway and she gets like the flutters around travis but she doesn't know why the fact that she's going to be moving soon so she kind of doesn't want to start up a relationship with anybody um do i think it's any more like tropes i can't really think of anything it is the next day and i just thought i'd update you a bit on my thoughts on this book i thought i did say i was going to just update you when i finish the book but i'm not i'm going to update you sooner than that so i've tapped quite a bit which i'm very happy about i've never tapped a book before but i'm enjoying it i'm currently at page 169 which is halfway through a chapter i know crazy i can just stop halfway through the chapter it's a weird skill of mine <laughs> but Oh my god, I thought it was raining then. I was like, what's happening? I thought, oh my god, it's rain. It's not. So, what's happened? I feel like I have so many thoughts on Travis and Haven. So, Haven clearly has a lot of secrets still. And we're only just over halfway through the book. So, there still is a time for the secrets to come out. And I'm hoping it's not like a third act breakup thing when the secrets come out. Because, I mean, it's okay if it is. But I think it disappoint me a little bit. But I hope we find out soon enough. There's definitely things in her past that we don't know about. Like, things that have been mentioned that she has fears of. Or her brother's mentioned that, oh, don't worry about this. And it's like, wait, why would she be worrying about that? So I do want to find out more about that. The brother is a tricky character. Like, I feel like we've been told why we shouldn't like him. And we have seen a little bit. But I feel like I need to see more before I decide that I don't like him. I feel like there has to be more behind why he acts the way he does. Because... It's very strange. My theory is that he acts the way he does because he had such a complicated childhood and maybe it's because he's just quite broken from it and that's why he does what he does. I feel like Travis's character, we've had quite a few moments where he's shown his his um, regret for how he treated Archer and his like morals and I feel like it, honestly this book couldn't have been set any earlier than eight years later because everything that Travis did, I've said this already, but everything that Travis did, like I couldn't forgive if this was only set like a year later, but the fact this is eight years later, it's very clear that he has tried to mend the bond with, with um, Archer and Brie. And he's obviously a great uncle to his nephews and niece. I, I feel like that's the only way that us as a reader could have warmed to him if that makes sense i feel like it just couldn't have been any sooner this book because it just it wouldn't have been enough time for me to say yeah i forgive you now and it's not like i could forgive him for what he did but i can understand why he did what he did and he clearly shows a lot of regret and remorse 
so I'm very happy about that. I think he's also a very broken character. He's very similar to Archer in a way. Like, he's so broken. We've seen not as many flashbacks as we did in Archer's voice, which is one of the aspects I loved about Archer's voice. We saw one at the beginning, the first chapter, where we saw his reaction when he was seven years old to his dad leaving him and trying to go and run away with Archer and his mum. And that was a sad chapter, like, honestly, because you saw why Travis is so angry and why he feels second best to everybody. And we've just now seen another reason with Gage and we've seen their relationship a bit more. Um, I think I remember who Gage was in the last book, um, but it has been a little while since I read it. But I do think I remember who he was. The cover is so beautiful. Look at that. It's so pretty. I've been watching Sarah Crowley as well this morning whilst I've been getting ready and just like picking up a book every five minutes to read some more while she's reading because it's just so... When you see someone else reading, you just want to pick up your book. I'm going to have to change the title of this book, of this book, of this video. I just finished. Let me first of all show you the amount of tabs I've got in this book. If that doesn't show you how much I enjoy this book, this was such a wild card. I picked this up because I knew that I loved the first book. I then started reading it because it was a short book and I was thinking, this is probably like a four star or something. It's gonna be so good, but like, not so good. It's gonna be good, but like not the best book ever. And I thought it's about Travis. I don't really like Travis as a character. The last 20% had blindsided me. I did not expect that. We got, okay, let me explain. We got the big like problem, the dilemma that happened that broke my heart. And I was like, how do you come back from that? You know, when like the guys in the book do the thing that you're like, how can you come back from that? Like you've messed up. It was one of those. And it was probably the worst mess up I've ever seen. But the comeback, I don't think I've seen a better comeback. Like, my favourite, like, comeback from, like, a third act breakup has always been probably Twisted Love. Not Twisted Love. Yes, Twisted Love, probably, because I really liked that. Um, this, I don't, I don't, I don't understand how that was so good. I wasn't expecting that, but it, it was amazing. So, the comeback and, like, the resolve, I fully, wholeheartedly agreed with and I felt like it was brilliant. I just felt the characters were amazing and I cried like four times throughout this book. I also felt that the explanation behind characters, like side characters, really made this book stand out from other books. Like we had Batty Betty and then the truth of why people thought she was Batty came out and then what had happened to her, I was crying my eyes out. Um, Bert and Betty's relationship i was crying like i was emotional about the truth about cricket blubbering mess by the very end i was crying my eyes out even the truth about why haven looks after plants so much and why she cares about them so much that got me it was all the details about these characters like these characters were fully fleshed characters and when i say that i mean they have the roots behind the characters are detailed we find out things after we've met them that just make you fall in love with these characters even more i'm gonna have to give the book a five star like why does this always happen <laughs> whenever i do one of these videos that's like read this life by a five star the video is always like five minutes long it did it when i read the google's guide um no what was it the google's guide to murder the final book as good as dead that video was like 10 minutes long <laughs> so i'm gonna change this video to be let's see how many five star reads i can get in one video because i feel like i don't want to leave this video on one book i'm like in the mood to read my books and i've got some more potential five stars so i'm just gonna see how many five stars i can find in one video yeah next i have decided my next book and i have picked out my tabs for it and everything so i picked the invisible life of Addie larue i am so excited to read this book ve Schwab, I think. I'm not too sure. But look how pretty it is. I did debate the hardback, but the paperback was just gorgeous. And this book is about a woman in France in 1714, and she makes a deal to live forever, but to be remembered by none. And then one day in like the now, 300 years later, 
somebody remembers her so basically she wakes up one day nobody knows who she is she can make friends relationships sleep with people and everything no one remember her the next day so the next day she goes into a shop i'm pretty sure and somebody recognizes her from the day before and it's like how because she's been cursed for like 300 years that nobody will ever remember her but she'll live forever and somebody remembers her so it's a little novel i don't know if it's a romance or anything but i'm very very excited to read this the tabs I've picked out, by the way, are these ones. I just think these are really cute. They're like muted pastels, but for some reason I feel like they go with the book. I'm going to start this book now. Don't know how far I'm going to get, but we will see. some more is the next day and i'm at page 142 of this book it is really good i'm enjoying it that is how much i've read so far and i feel like it's a bit slow right now we've met henry who is the male main character and obviously we know who addy is and we've seen the hardships of how bad this curse is for her so it's been a lot of world building and a lot of setting the scene which i'm not i'm not mad at it is a bit slow, but I'm not mad at it. Um, so this world building has shown her going to Paris for the first time and how how difficult her life's been because she can't get a job, obviously, because no one remembers her. And she's trying to survive and she can't get any place to live because they don't remember letting her the place. They don't remember her paying. They don't remember who she is. So it's hard for her and it's really emotional reading it like i've tapped so many emotional parts that it's just heartbreaking some of it it's just yeah spoken to the god and it's clear that he is a wicked god like he has used her her how, what, what do i say her he's used her helplessness to for his own enjoyment that's it um and his own benefit uh we did have a perspective from henry we had one chapter from his perspective and it seems like he has something going on as well like i don't know what it is but he's got something like addy where no one remembers her he's got something similar that is kind of like a curse but i don't know what that's all about and it seems like he did remember her but I don't know if he did. So I'm waiting for the scene, like the bookshop scene to happen. I'm pretty sure, yeah, she goes back in the bookshop and then meets Henry, he remembers her, it says in the back. So I'm really excited to see that, to see her finally have someone remember her because she's been through so much. I mean, we're getting flashbacks and we're only up to, I think we're up to 17, 15, the year. And then our now chapters are in 2014. So we've still got a way to go to like get up to speed about everything that's happened to her. It's definitely like a novel. I didn't really know much about this book apart from the fact that the back interested me. I went on Goodreads to update how much I'd read. And in the comments, one well, the comments, in the review section, there was so many people that I've watched who have read this book and given it five stars. So this could be a five star. This could be our second five star read of the video. I hope so. understand why everyone said this book is emotional <laughs> there's so much that's making me well up <sighs> i'm at page 220 and i'd say after page like 150 is when like the pace picks up it's still a little bit slow but i feel like they were setting the tone and like trying to get all the backstory set up and everything and oh my god it's hitting hard like it's a really good book. 
I have just taken a little break. I have my dinner and I thought this would be the best time to update you on everything about this book and have a little chat about it because I don't think I've had a proper chat about this book yet and I'm really like <laughs> loving this book. <laughs> it's really good and I initially thought this book is really slow. Look at all the tabs I've done like I'm really liking this book. <laughs> so I initially thought this book is like quite slow and I realised that the writer is setting the pace, like the setting, the whole background, teaching us about who Addie really is, where she came from, the hardship she's had to face throughout learning about this curse that she's now got. And I like that because now I'm invested. Like I'm at page 277, I think. Yeah, 277. Like that's how far in I am. And I am so invested, like, I don't want to put this book down, I'm obsessed, and I feel the same way I did when I read books like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, um, I'm trying to think about other five star reads that I've had that are reminding me of this, like, I'm really nervous, because <laughs> I want our girl to have a happy ending, like, I really do, and I'm so nervous that she's not going to get one, and I've learnt my lesson, I am not going to look up if there's a happy ending or not, because I did that, what's it called, The Way I Am Now, and I low-key ruined the end, but didn't. It told me the wrong ending. Like, it told me an ending that wasn't the ending. So, like, I was already bummed out before I read the end. And then I read the end and was like, wait, I looked at the wrong book. Like, that was not the ending of the book I, like, looked up online. But, like, karma. So, <laughs> I her to have, like, a happy ending. I tabbed so much, so you won't be able to see the colours very well. But all the blue is where we've had, like, romantic interactions that have just made my heart be, like... <laughs> And then we've got pink here, we've only got one so far because this is a new tab I've started. The pink is like quotes that are like standout quotes to me. So what is this one? She knows it's not fair to make him choose. He is full of roots while she has only branches. And it's like such like a heartbreaking quote. And then I've also got light pink, which is where we've had like plot things happen, which is like big moments that are memorable. Peachy colour is when emotional things have happened, which it's all over this book like the peach color where it's broken my heart and i have sobbed some tears very glad that they've done it the way it has like the reason i'm saying they is because i don't know if the writer is a male or a female oh no the cover it's the gold lettering that like smudges off so the word addy has already started smudging which is actually really scary because i mean the book's all about like addy larue be, like, being invisible like now the words Addy are like disappearing that's a bit creepy overall I'm really liking it I don't want to put this book down like I'm so enthralled and I haven't felt that in a long time I feel like the last time I felt that properly where I was like I cannot put this book down was probably I actually want to have a look <laughs> whilst I'm doing this I want to say if you read this book please please get up the Spotify playlist because it makes all the difference because I listened to the first I read the first 20% without Spotify playlist and I was like, this is slow, but I'm liking it. And then as soon as I did Spotify playlist, it hit so much deeper. The music that people have saved for this book is phenomenal and it hits, it makes everything hit so much harder. Probably just for the summer, which was May? Yeah, May. And I just, I couldn't put that book down. Um, also, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, probably the only other one I can think of right now. Back to my playlist right now, Once Upon a December is playing, which is a, everything's quite like instrumental on this. So we've got Autumn Leaves, which is an instrumental thing, instrumental piece. There's loads of instrumental stuff on here, but also loads of stuff from known people. So we've got a few known songs. We had some Kate Bush, Girl in Red, loads of music on here but i would recommend that because the vibes like the person who created this playlist has like got the vibes head on so i would recommend pages left <laughs> I'm a mess <laughs> I can't 
stop crying. It's so emotional and the rides out the way this rides out rides is amazing. It's everything. I'm in shock at that book. I've just been sobbing for the entire ending of there's a spider hanging off my ceiling. I'm gonna go fix that real quick. You see, I said I was gonna take care of that. I did not. <laughs> I have out to do it. The ending of that book. I really was like in shock. Then the twist happened and I was like, what? Am I okay with this ending now, this new ending? And there's another like thing that led on and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> mess, crack my eyes out. And then the very, very last thing that happened, I took my glasses off. I literally went, what? <laughs> like truly, truly in shock. Amazing book. Right now I'm giving it a five star. In the morning it'll be a five star. I have no words. I, in fact, the ending was so good. I didn't annotate like the last few pages, but look how many annotations that book has got. just saying it was an amazing book i would highly recommend that but i will say it's addictive you will not want to put it down <laughs> and it is emotional it is really emotional but that's my second five star read of this video okay i've picked my next read and it's not one that I actually even spoke about. It's just one that I randomly am just like, yeah, you know what? I really want to read that book. And what I've chosen is Butcher and Blackbird. I really want to read this all of a sudden. I don't know why. I've just got like the feeling I want to read this. And I just want to read something polar opposite of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because that really has taken a toll on me. I really love the book, it was so good. Um, I'll go into depth in a bit about that book but I'm going to start this now and then I'll give you an update on Addie LaRue and just tell you like, my thoughts and my full opinions because last night was a bit of a mess. I have started Butcher and Blackbird. It is good, it's not what I expected. But it is good. I'm liking it. So I'm at page 23. I'm pretty sure I've read two chapters and I've read the trigger warnings and everything. I am not one of those people who reads trigger warnings and goes, oh, I'm just going to keep reading and then complains. Like, no, I've read the trigger warnings. I know what I'm in for. I love a dark book. Like, one of my favourite books is the Mind F series, and I love Haunting and Hunting Adeline, and my stance on that will probably never change. There is currently a big debate about whether or not people should read Haunting Adeline and Hunting Adeline, I think that's just ridiculous. Um, and the argument is, like, it promotes certain things, and it's like, no, it doesn't. It's just, like, certain people's kinks, and also there was trigger warnings at the start of the book, so don't read a book if you don't have trigger warnings. Just saying. Advice with Liv. <laughs> I've seen these two characters meet for the first time and they're like meet cute and it was it was interesting. It was definitely like rom com y vibes, but then you've got to remember these are serial killers. And the author has said this is meant to be a rom com but it's also a horror. So very different to anything I've ever read before. It's the next day and I think I am ready to talk about the book that I read that I didn't actually debrief much about, which is The Invisible Life of Abby LaRue. Abby. Addy LaRue. So let's talk about that and then, oh my god my words, let's talk about that and then we'll talk a bit about Butcher and Blackbird. So I finished this the other day and it's so weird, I've said this so many times now, but the words Addy LaRue like are a bit scratched off if you can see and that's just weird based on what this book's about. So this book was so good. I ended up giving this book a five star. So this is the second five star of this video. <laughs> I didn't actually know that much about this book. I saw one YouTuber read it and she said she didn't like it. So I was like, oh, uh, I'll give it a go. And so I gave it a go because the back was brilliant. I was so intrigued. Midway through reading, I went on Goodreads and I saw that Destiny, Sarah and Jamie's library had all read this book. And I was like, wait, what? So I checked and they had all highly rated it. And I was like, I had no idea that anybody else had even read this book. I'd never heard anybody else, like I'd never heard of anyone else reading this book. 
was very, very excited midway through. Just to give you some idea, this is the amount of tabs I have for this book. <laughs> this is the amount of tabs. So good. I want to say, if you read this book, please, please push through to the 150 point mark because you will think this book's dragging a bit, but it's good and it gets better. The reason the author initially drags this book quite a bit, it's quite a slow start, is because they're trying to make you hooked to Addie. Like they're trying to make you understand how difficult life has been for her. So this book is about this girl called Addie LaRue and she is in 1700s France and she is basically expected as a young woman to marry somebody and it doesn't matter who he is and have children and that's her life there's nothing else to it and she doesn't want that for herself there is the local like witch there as well like she's not a witch but she kind of is and she prays to the gods and is obsessed with gardening and herbs and things and she's always talking about the gods and how if you ever in need you can always talk like call on the gods for their help but never pray after dark because that's when the gods that aren't exactly the best gods come out and the evil comes out. Addie LaRue ends up wishing for something to happen in her life and she prays to the wrong gods by accident which you find out in the book how that happens and she ends up becoming somebody that everybody forgets and it is heartbreaking like there's so many so many scenes that are just absolutely heartbreaking I mean let's go to the first one so there's like the mo oh that is so hot I went to the actually the worst one I could have gone to. That is actually heartbreaking. I've honestly got so many tabs where things have happened that are just heartbreaking. And the thing about this book, um, I can't give you any explanations, any explanations, any examples really, because it'll ruin the book anyway. We flick between the past and the present. So we go between the 1700s France and the now, which is set in 2014. This book is also partitioned into parts. So part one, we kind of get the explanation of what happened. Then we meet Henry, who is our male main character, and we see one perspective from him. Then also, I don't know what order this is all in. So there is parts where we get to find out about Henry and more about him and his past and why he's the only person who actually recognizes Addie and why he's the only person who can remember her. It is such a good book. I thought this book was gonna be a 4.5, 4.75. I thought it was really good. And I thought this is gonna be a really good romance. I was wrong. <laughs> this book is a novel through and through. If you are expecting a happy ever after, I'm gonna to say to you that it's not exactly a happy ever after, but it is a bittersweet heart aching ending. And it is so fulfilling. And I bawled my eyes out, like I was an actual wreck. And afterwards, I was so happy with the ending. I don't think it could have gone any other way for me to be happy. I think if it was too generic with a happy ever after, I would have been very much bummed out by the end of this book because Addie's lived for 300 years. It would have been very boring to have a very basic ending. But there's so many plot twists. So there's so many plot twists and so many sections where you're like, wait, what? And that is what the dark blue points are, or when I've, I had a moment of, wait, what the hell? But these two characters and their relationship with each other, their friendship and everything is just so beautiful. And because you follow Addie through the highs and lows of her life, I mean, she literally was nobody. Like, how do you get a job? How do you find somewhere to live if no one ever remembers you? No one ever remembers you paying the rent. No one ever remembers you as a person how can you ever take up residency somewhere so life is obviously very hard for her and she has to learn over the 300 years how to really fend for herself and how to live in a world that no one's ever lived in before and it's heartbreaking some of the stuff you see her lose her position her possessions you see her lose her friends her family members you see her experience life as a girl on the streets in 1700 France and she goes through some horrible things and there are so many scenes that had me heartbreak like heartbroken like Remy the whole friendship with Remy and how that ended if you've read this book you'll know what the hell I'm on about that broke me like nothing else in this book did I was I was a wreck and you get so many scenes and it's you're not just attached to Addie though when we learn about Henry and get his point of views and his perspective on what he's been through in life you feel like you're attached to that character as well and it is a long book like it's 500 
it's 501 541 pages it's not long long but it's longer than like your average book and you may think oh it's a bit thick trust me it needs to be this thick the ending was brilliant i honestly i don't think i felt this amazed at a book since seven husbands of evelyn hugo and i'd probably say bright side which if there's ever a book i will always highly recommend it's bright side by kim holden and that is like my only six star book i've ever read this was a solid five star i was thoroughly impressed i thought the writing style was so beautiful it was so poetic also luke i liked luke's character so luke was the god in this book i thoroughly enjoyed him because i thought he had so many highs and lows in this book you felt so conflicted with him with everything he put Addie through and then the nice stuff he did but was it niceness he can't truly understand what it's like to be kind and to love and to care and it's it's written so well it was like a book and did i really just say that i meant a film oh my god i did not just say that like a film it's like you're watching a film and also it's kind of like you're watching people's lives like it's it feels real and I'm so happy that I tabbed it as I went along because I had a feeling it was going to be a good book. Butcher and Blackbird, which is my Kindle read. I am currently, I think, I'm over 100 pages. 141, I'm partway through chapter 12. I am really liking this book. I didn't expect to like it. I am. So this book is a rom-com horror, which is weird. I Rowan and Sloane. And Rowan is Irish. I know that for a fact. Um... And they're both serial killers, like they have killed people and they are still killing people. It's this itch they have, this obsession they have. And they bump into each other in the middle of a kill and Sloane was stuck. Like she had managed to get herself stuck in the middle of a kill and he helped her out and that was their first encounter. And since then they have made each of the challenges every year where they get sent somebody with a name. Both of them have to rush to kill this person first to win and it's the thing they do every year but having to wait that year after the first year of doing it like the first time doing it having to wait a year they have this like tension between them they're always texting and it's this rom-com vibe which is so strange with like a horror book and they have this vibe between them he can't stop thinking about her there's so many cute moments where for instance he lives in a different area to her different state completely and she went to his state to see him but without telling him and when he found her she was like no no, no I'm, I'm here for um, a work i'm at an interview today i've got some meeting and it wasn't true she'd just gone down there to see him because she missed him it's probably gonna be like a 4.5 maybe like i'm really excited but yes i'm very much enjoying it and i know this is a part of a three-part series so i'm very excited to read the other books as well finished the book it was so good i gave it a 4.5 it isn't a five star so it's not a five star of this video but i still really enjoyed it i thought it was so good so where i left you i think i was at the 50 percent mark or just about that and i said to you it was very rom com -y and there was some like thriller aspects it went like from zero to 100 on like spice like the moment these two characters like hit their peak in the intensity of their bromance and the tension and it broke that was such a good moment i i just love when the romantic tension when it breaks and it's so satisfying this was that it was brilliant i was so happy i also loved how little things happened in the beginning that we were like why is that important it feels important and later on it got revealed and i was like oh my god that's so adorable the spice scenes were giving dark romance in a way um so there was that as well which i appreciated this book just seemed like it had like so many aspects of books that i love like it had dark romance romance rom-com thriller horror it had everything that i adore on holiday in my holiday vlog i mentioned that i started yours truly by abby Jimenez. i started the audiobook now i have just renewed my what's it called spotify membership and on spotify you get 15 hours of audiobooks so i have just picked up the yours truly again and i've been listening to that this morning and right now i'm at 
42%, I'm pretty sure. I've been enjoying that, I really like it. Um, there is the potential for this to be a bad star, so I'm really excited. <laughs> There's this like bad like miscommunication at the start. Um, there is a lot of talk of anxiety and Jacob clearly struggles with talking to people and social anxiety. And there's also a fake dating trope that's just started, which I love. I'm enjoying it. I have got the physical copy, so I probably will end up tabbing that with scenes that I love and things that are my favourite things in it because I already have the book. Hmm. <laughs> I've not finished the book yet. I'm at page 353. Um, I don't know what percentage I'm at, but I started to read the physical book again. Um, kind of like going between physical book and audiobook. So I went from really thinking this book was going to be a 4.75. I was really liking it. I love Jacob. I thought the whole plot was great. I loved the fake dating. I loved the families. And I loved the whole kidney storyline. Then the miscommun miscommunication trope started and I'm not for miscommunication and it's one of those things where they both were just not talking to each other about something and it was just so annoying and then when it finished I was like oh okay thank god that's finished and then it was almost as if like we were waiting for something else to happen um like it just felt like too there were so many parts where they were like it all seemed so perfect too perfect and it's like it was like it was an omen that something bad was going to happen. I was just like, ugh, like now it's not going to be a shock if something bad happens. I'm probably going to say this is my least favourite Abby Jimenez book. I thought this was going to be really good. I was really excited. I'm not enjoying it. And then the second thing happened and she's being so distant and things. Her problem is she doesn't talk about things. She just runs away from the problem. And it's so bad, like, Jacob's got such high anxiety and he's got social anxiety and he has panic attacks and yet she's put him through this stuff. It's like, he already struggles as it is. Why are you making him go through this? Why are you making him feel so awful and leaving him and not telling him what's happening? Constantly saying, we're never going to be together, Jacob, just face it. And then five minutes later, running back to him. I just think she's just being toxic right now i think she's really not doing good she's how do i say it? i feel like she's just not communicating anything and i've actually given up annotating because i'm at the point where i'm like Ugh. like i just really can't be honest with this anymore i really can't wait for it to end um so it ends on page 387 so still a little while left the book. it's done with I don't have to read it anymore. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I I feel like I enjoyed the ending. It was nice. And the diary, the, the journal bit was really sweet. I, that bit I was like, oh. Um, and I did enjoy it. I thought it was, the ending was nice. Um, I just felt like the whole section of miscommunication, I didn't like, I, I didn't like. I didn't enjoy or like and I didn't enjoy the other trope that happened I can't say because it'll spoil the book I understand that she reacted the way she did because of what she'd been through in the past with Nick but at the same time I was like you're putting Jacob through so much right now and his anxiety is as bad as it is like you don't need to be doing this to him I was initially it was a 4.75 then all the miscommunication tropes happened and the other stuff happened and it went down to 3.75 and the ending was really good so I feel like I'm going to give it a solid 4. I feel like a 4 is definitely the right the right rating for this. I expected to like this a lot more than I did. I didn't like it that much I think that's why it's like disappointed me a bit. I did tab quite a bit of it that I enjoyed. A lot of it isn't tabbed because I gave up with the ending. I think I tabbed two romance sections that I enjoyed. I think Jacob's a really good character. I like him. But I thought like Brianna has so much trauma and so much background stuff happening that she just, she made it very difficult for Jacob. And I didn't like her. I didn't like the spice scenes because it seemed like the times that she slept with Jacob were times where he was in need as well. And it just felt like she used him a little bit. Yes, I hope you have enjoyed. I'll see you guys soon with another video. I think this is going up 
on a Sunday. So I will see you guys on Thursday with another video. Tell me if you have enjoyed this video, if you want any other videos in particular. And go check out my book haul, which will just put in up on Thursday. And yeah, tell me if you enjoyed this video or not. Tell me some five star books that you have read and I want to read some more. I I think I'm going to go on to fantasy next. I've got some orders coming in today that I've ordered off Amazon. So you will send them in my book haul video. But I'm probably going to go on to a fantasy or a thriller like i'm i'm wanting a thriller or something or even the next gold rush ranch book or swift and saddled i might go on to i don't know yet but i'll see you guys in another video and yes subscribe like and do that stuff we're so so close to 900 subscribers like it's insane subscribe and maybe we'll get there very soon maybe we'll get there before the end of 2024 we will see but yes bye